Viva Sparkling Flavored Water. Water, but better. Sheikli Show Limited, the Caribbean's largest manufacturers of plain and printed paper bags, leaders in plastic bags, vermicelli, spit piece powder, and greaseproof paper, ideal for doubles, french fries, and sandwiches. Supplying stores nationwide. For quality products, trust Sheikli Show Limited, 665-3336. Save big this Christmas with Food Basket Family Deals now on at Shogwanas and Arima. Apples, 10 for $20. Prunes, $9.95 per pound. Tyson Leg Quarters, 11 pounds for $69.95. Butter Cookies, 5 tins for $99. Marinex Dishes, 2 for $99. Goat Stew, $37.95 per pound. Birchia Fries, 2,000 grams, $19.95. Take advantage of these Christmas specials at Food Basket, Shogwanas and Arima. Good evening, assalamu alaikum, and welcome to See Results on IBN TV, and also streaming live on our See Results Facebook page. Um, I am your math teacher for this afternoon, Mr. Ijaz Ramsahai, and I am so happy for you all to have joined us once again as we continue in our efforts to prepare you, to prepare you all, the, the candidates, for the SEA exam in April of 2020. Now, the great thing about See Results and I was thinking about this a little bit over the weekend, is that you as a parent are actually in the classroom when you are watching this program with us. How often is that even possible? Is it the norm for a parent to sit in a classroom during the school time within a school compound? No, that's, that's not normal at all. Even in the after school lessons, you drop your kid off, they take their lessons, and then you pick them up and you bring them back home afterwards. This is a rare opportunity to have six hours a week of English, math, and creative writing, where you can sit as a parent, understand what is, what's taking place in the classroom, what's required of your child for the SEA, and help you to help them, okay? So by you understanding what's going on and what is required of them in the exam, you can also benefit yourself by, you know, refreshing yourself of the knowledge and the concepts that you may have forgotten or gotten a little rusty in uh, with time. As you've left school, you've left primary school probably a very long time ago. And even what you may remember from secondary school, it's a little bit different at the primary level. We look at things in a, in a slightly different way. So we hope that you will benefit and you will continue to benefit, that you will share our live stream on Facebook. Um, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, anybody who might have kids in standard four and five that will be writing the essay exam in the next year or two, please do let them know about the program and let them join. And so I just have a little bit of um, housekeeping to do. So our Edmodo access code has been updated and I have it here for you on the screen. Um, it's now 6K. JQ3Y in all common letters. Um, apparently, the website, from time to time, it refreshes the code. So if you're logging into edmodo.com or downloading the app and you register your child, um, or even if you are creating an account as a parent, you would need to now put in this code instead. For those of you who are already members, already inside, you already have your password, your username, and so on, this will have no impact on you whatsoever. This is only for those people who have not yet signed up and are going to register now. You will need a different code to enter. Those of you who are already inside, your password and username would remain the same. Okay, as an alternative, there is also a link in the About section of our Facebook page, which if you click on it, you will, it will direct you straight to our page. You will not need to enter any access code, but when you do create an account, Either myself or Ms. Nyla will have to approve you, and we usually do the approvals as we get the notifications 
um, on our phones during our break times and lunch times and so on. So you're always being accepted, whether you access our content via the access code, which as we've said, is now updated for those of you who will now be joining us. And um, you can also access it via clicking the link in our About section. Okay, so just as I did last week, I just wanna give you some facts and figures about how your children have performed on the Edmodo quiz, um, quizzes that we would have made available. Um, so our student population grew from 130 to 162 students, right? And we still have roughly a quarter of the parents with their personal, with their parent accounts tied to their students. Again, it's not really a huge issue. If you don't do that, um, as long as you monitor your child, because I presume they would more than likely be using a, a device that you would have control over. So if you don't have a parent account, that, that is also okay. All right, and we had 40 students attempting our English language art quiz, which is on punctuation, all right? And we had about 73% of them passed it with an average of about 64%. Of course, this doesn't mean that your child got 64%. They can look at their personalized feedback on the Edmodo quizzes themselves. We would have had several people attaining 100%, 90 something percent in the English language task. We also had 41 doing the mathematics and 80% of the students passed. So last, the last time they didn't do so great in the previous uh, quiz. But this one, which, which was on place value, so, and the reason that I'm doing this is so that you can have an idea of the topics where children might be struggling and you can emphasize those, right? So place value is something very basic, but some people still can't quite, can't quite wrap their head around it perfectly, so you would encourage your students to spend a little more time on that topic, not to say that they should neglect the topic of time, which is what we tested on um, last time around, but they did, they did much better than they did with the place value. 80% of them passed with a pass rate, or, or sorry, a, a average score of about 68%. All right, so I want to commend all of you who did the quizzes. Um, please, we have new ones up. We have three new assignments up. One for the English language arts on grammar. We have one as well in the mathematics, which is based on the topic that we covered last week, and that would have been in geometry, the quarter turns, all right? Mine just slipped there for a moment. So there's a quiz there on the quarter turns. So you could go there, test your knowledge of quarter turns, whether it be on a clock face, whether it be on um, the cardinal points and so on, some very nice questions. A lot of students have already done it. We have posted it on Sunday and it will remain open until this coming Sunday at 11.59 p.m. So I'm giving you all ample time since we were just a day or two um, late with our usual posts, it being examinations time and report time at school, all right? So you have, an, uh, have a week to test yourself on those topics which we would have covered last week. Please do so um, before Sunday night and you will get your feedback. Again, the, beauty, the beautiful thing about it is that you get your feedback instantaneously. Um, in the case of creative writing, you might need for us to wait, to wait a bit for us to review it, but it's going to be pretty quick for the English language arts and the maths in particular, all right? And uh, last week, I, when we had three students who were able to attain total marks in both English language arts and the mathematics. And I was not sure if we would have a repeat of that so quickly, but luckily we did, right? And thanks to the efforts of Angelina Andrews and Zachary Xavier, you know, whichever school you're representing, whichever community you're representing, your family, um, I want to commend you. It was no easy task to get total in both assignments. So you, are, you guys are our champions for this week. And I'm not going to neglect these boys and girls here who would have just missed out by a mark um, in either one of the topics. And they, some of these names we are recognizing from the calls that we've been receiving, Ariana Chu, Jaheem Marcel, Jadon Reshe, Noah Saran, Isabella Shah, Cassandra Sinwai-Leung, and Sebastian Eccles. 
Very, very good, very well done. You all probably just missed out by one mark, if so much. Um, and because, yeah, you can get point something in some of our questions. So you would not have missed by more than that. And congrats to you, and hopefully next week you can be on the previous slide with those who have gotten 100% in both of our exercises, all right? We're not, I'm not including the creative writing in this. Creative writing always have a, has a bit of an element of subjectivity on something getting 100%. So we'll stick to those things where we have those rigid answers, the English and the maths. And if you happen to get total in both, you will be featured as our students of the week. So, we're moving on now back into our SEA paper. All right, so far we've looked at three of the four strands that I said will be coming, parents, especially I'm directing this to you, right? We have our measurement and we have our number, our geometry, and we also have our statistics, which is what we'll be focusing on today. All right, and we've been currently, and we will be for some time again, focusing on the section one type questions, the questions that are v um, valued at one mark each, and we want to make sure that everybody can get maximum marks in those section one questions, all right? As for the statistics, in section one there are three questions, questions 18 to 20, and I'm gonna show you today at least one or two of the topics that consistently come under the section one statistics part of the paper, and that has to do with averages, okay? So today, we're going to be discussing averages, but just for those of you who might hear the word statistics, you hear it all the time in the news, you know, lots of people trying to sway your opinion one way or another, and I myself would have just presented some statistics to you about those who did the exercises, how much people participated, how many passed, what was the average mark. All of those things are actually statistics. And the way to understand the statistics, well, there's no shortcut around it. You actually have to know what some of the key things mean, all right? So it is the study of data, right? Or some people say data. And it's really how to collect, analyze, summarize, and present it. To collect, analyze, summarize, and to present it. So usually stats, um, they are accompanied by lots of nice graphics, like graphs and your pie charts, your bar charts, you know, these types of things. So it's about collecting the information or the data, right? Analyzing it, studying it, and coming up with certain um, inferences based on the data and being able to or there's some conclusions, and then being able to present it in some manner, right? Be it numerically, by the use of numbers, or be it gra graphically, and both are tested in the SEA. And we will be, God willing, of course, covering all of these before you write your SEA exam. So some people had actually mentioned about mean and averages in our Edmodo group, and it just so happened that this is the topic that we're covering now. Um, continue to, to bring in your requests. Um, we won't always be able to do a topic the immediate time that you request it, but we will be trying very hard to complete at least some overview of all the main topics before the SEA exam, because we do know that it's right around the corner. So I mean, what, what do I mean by mean, right? Is it that I am mean? No. It's a different kind of mean, all right? This mean, or the arithmetic mean, is commonly called the average, all right? It's called arithmetic mean because there are other, other types of mean, all right? So the arithmetic mean is commonly called the average. So basically, I gave you all a little while ago the average score of our student participants in the ELA and in the mathematics, all right? So each individual student would have gotten a different score, all right? Some may have gotten the same score as another person, but the score varies from person to person, all right? We had a total of 40 students doing the ELA assignment and a total of 41 doing the mathematics assignment. All right, so what we, what we would have had to have done to get this average or this mean, this arithmetic mean, is to add all of those scores together, 
right? And then divide it by the number of students who would have done the assignments, and that's how we got those average scores. I think one was 60-something percent and one was 70-something percent, all right? So that's how we come up with those numbers. And this is a skill that you have to learn to do right in your SEA exam or for your SEA exam, all right? So how do we find the mean? We add up all the numbers, right, to get a sum or a total, and then we divide the total or the sum by the number of numbers that we have, okay? So as we do some examples, hopefully this will become clearer to you. All right, parents? So this is the average or the mean, right? The mean or the average. Uh, we're dealing here specifically with the arithmetic mean, right, for SEA. Yeah, or you will also be tested on a different um, measure of average, right, which is called the mode, all right? So there's a, there's a difference there, and we're going to get into that. But when somebody typically says the average, they don't mean mode, right? They mean the arithmetic mean. Okay, so just here to have this formula there for you really, really nicely. Um, the sum or the total of whatever it is we're trying to find the mean of, so that's the top here, the numerator, and we divide by the number of numbers, or how many numbers. Okay, we could of course say this in more technical language, but we're trying to make sure that everybody understands, okay? So a different way to put it a bit shorter is the sum divided by the count. So what I mean by that, if I have five people sitting on an exam, the sum would be the five marks that they get, I take those five marks and I add it up, all right? And the count is five, or the number of students that would have taken the exam, which is five. So I total their scores, I divide it by five, and I will get an average score for that group of students, all right? So this is what we mean by the arithmetic mean, the sum of the total divided by the number of items that we have, or which we can also refer to as the count. So at this point in time, I am going to open the lines and allow for anybody out there who's brave enough to give this a go, right? We have here a question, and those numbers will be displayed on your television screen at the moment. And I will read this question for you until we get a caller. The table below shows the time taken for five runners to complete a race. So we have five runners, Carl, Jerry, Lisa, Kizzy, and Mark. And we have the times that they would have taken to complete the race, okay? 10 minutes, 25 minutes, 12 minutes, 20 minutes, and 28 minutes. In this case, all very different times from each other. Well, maybe not that different, but they are, in fact, different numbers. And what we, would, what we are required to do is to calculate the average or the mean time taken to complete the race, all right? So if you're not able to work it out so quickly, you can call in and you can help me to solve this problem, all right? We want to know the average or the mean time taken to complete the race. And remember our formula, we have the sum divided by the count. All right, what is our sum for this question? And what is our count for this question? And I do have a caller on the line. Good evening. Welcome to See Results on IBN TV. Um. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, uh, my name is Nicholas. I'm calling from the Vultures in Joseph. And all right, welcome, Nicholas. Do you yeah. have an answer for us? Um, the total uh -huh. between the, the five people is um, 95 seconds. And when you divide that by five, you'll get 19. All right, well done. But is it 95 seconds? Yes, it is. Yeah, no, um, you'll get a minute and 35 seconds. <laughs> All right, so the time is actually given in minutes here, right? Yeah. So it is 95 minutes, so well done. And the 95, we divided it by five because we have five runners, right? Yeah. Well done, Nicholas. Thank you so much for your call. Okay. So he is quite correct, right? And again, we are always going to redo it here for those who may not have had the answer or those who may not know how the caller got to the answer. So we're just gonna recap. We have how many runners here? We have, count them, we have one, two, three, four, five runners, right? Each of the runners took this amount of time. So we need to sum the time. We 
we need to sum this time. All right. And in so doing, we're going to end up with 95 minutes. So we have a sum, and we have a count. All right, all together, all the times all together give us 95, which is our total or our sum, right? And the number of runners is five. So all that's left for me to do now is to take the 95 and divide it by five. All right, and this is how we get our 19 minutes, okay? 19 minutes is the average mean or mean time taken to complete the race. So thank you so much, Nicholas, for helping me with that question. Um, and there is a lot of information there on the board, and that was done in quite a, a short space of time. So well done to you, sir. And now we'll move on to another question that's going to test our knowledge of mean a little bit differently. All right, and please remember that all of these questions that we bring are very representative of what is going to be in the exam, okay? It's quite similar to what you will see in your examination. So here we have another question, and again, the lines are open, right? We have the mean of 180 is equal to the mean of 75 and something, all right? What is the value of that square or that, that unknown something, all right? So Think about it. What is our count and what is our sum? Right? So what they're basically saying is that the mean of these two numbers is the same as the mean of 75 and some mystery or some mysterious number. All right? So we want to know what number, when added to 75, will give us the same mean as 100 and 80. So if I have any brave souls out there who are willing to call, the time is now, right? I'm sure some of you are busy trying to work it out on your papers, you know, that you may have home there on the coffee table and so on. So remember, we're dealing with a sum, and it's being divided by a count. All right. So the sum, in this case, our sum, in this case from here is how much? Okay, and we do have a call on the line to assist us with this. Good evening, welcome to C Results on IBN TV. Hi. Hello. Hello. Who am I speaking with? Josiah Edwards. All right, welcome Josiah. And do you have an answer for us? Yes. Go ahead. Do you have to explain or give you the answer? You can explain, no problem. Okay, so the mean of 180 is 90. Okay. Right. So to find the missing number, mm -hmm. you have to subtract the total, which is 180, yeah. from 75. Right. You will get 105. 105? Yeah. All right. Excellent work. Well done. That is indeed correct. Thank well done you. to you. All right, so again, you're listening at home. If you didn't quite get it on the first go, that's no problem. We're going to help you there. All right, so we have a sum and a count of 180 and 2. And as you rightly said, if we were to divide this now, we would have gotten a mean of 90. But what if I told you that we don't even need to necessarily take it all the way there in order to know what our missing number is, all right? So it is 90, nothing is wrong with that, nothing is wrong with presenting that on the paper either, right? But we know that we have a sum and a count that should be equal to another sum and a count, right? 75 plus something divided by two, because this sum, of 180 should be equal to this sum here of 75 and the missing number, okay? So we basically need both of our numerators here on top to be equal, all right? So how do we do that? 
we want to know what added to 75 is going to give me an answer of 180. So I take away the value that we already have, which is the 75. And as he rightly stated, in subtracting this, we're going to get an answer of 105. And of course, if we added the 105 to the 75, we would end up back with 180. And should we divide it through, as he did, we would have gotten a 90 as well, right? So the answer to this question, lest I confuse you, is 105. So well done. Thank you so much, Kola, for, the, for that contribution. That was very correct. So we are two for two so far. Our callers are calling in, and they are doing quite well. We do have another question for you on the topic of mean. OK, so let's read it together. The mean of 25 and 30 is the same as the mean of 19 and something else. What number goes in the box? So this is very similar to the question that we've just answered. So maybe somebody who, didn't, who wasn't quite sure the first time around might feel more confident to call in now. How do we get the missing number, right? Remember, we're dealing again with this average, or this mean, this arithmetic mean, where we have a sum or a total divided by a count. What is our sum in this case, and what is our count, all right? What is our sum? And what is our count? So we basically need to have the sums and the counts matching in order for them to be equal to each other. All right? So our sum in this case is 25 add 30. Right? 25 add 30 divided by 2. Right? Sum over count. OK, and we do have a call on the line. Good evening. Welcome to IBN. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. Hello. Hi, good evening. Welcome to SC Results on IBN TV. Do you, would you like to help us answer this question? Yes, I would. Okay, so just, just please ask mommy or daddy to load on the TV, right? So that we will hear you clearly. Okay. All right, so you can go ahead and give us the answer. The answer is 36. And how did you because arrive at that? Out of the 25, and it took you the 55. Right. And the 55 take away the 90 will give you 36. So 36 plus 90 will give you the 35. All right. So the 55. Lovely. I love that confidence. Are you going to go into SCA with that light level of confidence, my friend? Yes, sir. Excellent. Well done. Thank you for calling. All right. So as he rightly said, the sum of 25 and 30 is 55. So we need to get another 55 over 2 on the other side, right? But we, are, we already have a 19, right? So our 19 added to this square must be equal to 55. So in order to know how much that would be, we need to do the opposite operation. All right, so instead of adding now, we're going to subtract. And this is how we get our 36. And as he confidently stated some moments ago, 36 added to 19 is going to give us back our 55. And when we divide that 55 by 2, we'll get the same mean. All right, and we don't even need to work out the mean in order to know the question. The answer to this question, how so? Because we know the sum, which is given by the 25, add, added to our 30. We know the count, because we are dealing with two numbers. All right? Is it the same count in the second um, part of the question? Yes, it is. It's 19, and some other number is going to give us the same mean. So therefore, we have the same count. All we need is for the sums to match. All right? So the 55 must match our 19 added to the missing number. And we get that missing number by simply 
subtracting our 19 from 55, which gives us 36, and that leaves us with a very firm 36 as our answer to this question. So thank you so much, Kuala. And now, and even another um, type of mean question, all right? I don't mean that the question is mean and angry, right? Another question about our understanding of the concept of mean. And this one will take a different approach or a different slant to the concept, and you must be aware of this, all right? So remember, those guys, those examiners, they are trying all how to dig that understanding out of you to see what did you actually learn. Did you just learn that mean equals sum over count? And when they put the question to you in this format now, you're at a loss. No, we have to be able to analyze the question and see what, what we need to apply. All right, and we do have a caller on the line. Good evening, caller. Welcome to see results on IBN TV. Yes, thank you. And who am I speaking with? Anna Thomas from Lacano. All right, Lacano. Welcome, Lacano. Um, thank you. Do you have an answer for this question for us? Yes, I do. Okay, go ahead. So first, they said that he, they have four numbers that make up the mean of 43, so you multiply four by the 43 and you'll get 172 and that's your total. All right, excellent, excellent work, well done. So that is flawless logic. Thank you for calling my friend. We have a sum, right? And we have, well, we don't actually have the sum in this case. We have the average, right? The count is four and the average or the mean is equal to 43, all right? So sum number divided by four gives me 43. Sum number divided by four gives me 43, or the sum of sum numbers, right? Four numbers, when I add them up, they give me a total, which when I divide it by four, is going to give me 43. So what I need to do now is to do the opposite operation on the other side. All right, which is to multiply by the four, as he rightly said. Okay, let's check his number to make sure that that was correct. I, that part wasn't very clear. All right, and the answer is 172. All right, so the answer, guys, is 172, thank you so much, Kola. Um, that answer was quite correct. So, so far we've looked at a few ways which we can be asked about the mean or the arithmetic mean, okay? In one, question one, we were given the numbers, all right, we were given the number of numbers and we were asked to find the mean. So we went ahead and we added those numbers up and we divided them by the number of numbers we had, right? In this case, it was five racers. We had their times for the race. So we added the times together. We divided by the five to get the average time of those racers, all right? Then we were also given some sums and we were told that the, the sum of these, of these two numbers um, gives us a mean of something, right? What other number must be added to a different scenario now in order to get the same mean, okay? So these are the different types of questions we had so far. We had one where we added the values together and divided by the number, all right? That's the most straightforward way that you could be asked. You could be given uh, one way to arrive at a sum, and now you're being asked at an alternate way to arrive at the sum in order to end up with the same average or the same mean, right? The count is the same. We just need to find a missing number to get the same sum as the first pair of numbers. And what was another way we are tested? We are given the average, we are given the count, and we need to find the sum through a process of multiplication. All right, so I hope everybody is clear on and on board so far, right? So, what next? Okay, 
So we have another question here on the board and another way that we might be asked about the mean. Hank is throwing darts. He scores the following points from his first five throws. After his sixth throw, the mean score was 25. What was his sixth score? We do have a caller on the line. Good evening, welcome to IBN. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Uh, Who am I speaking to? Hello? Okay, welcome to the program. Uh, would you like to help me answer this question? Yes. All right. So I hope you had an opportunity to read it properly. Um, how, how would you go about solving this problem? I will add all and then after the side of the total, okay. you, will, you will get five out, you must get six by 25, mm -hmm. and then the, the total that you get from 25, 15, 40, 30, and 15, you subtract it from the six by the 25, and you'll get your answer. Excellent, well done. So this is a seasoned mean um, problem solver on the line here. And did you already have an answer for us or, or would you like to work it out now? Work it out now. Please give me at least a minute, a minute, a minute. 10 seconds. <laughs> 10 seconds. All right. So, all right. I'm I, I with you on the line. So, you, you, you're going, you need to tell me how much this total, right? Twenty-four. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, so I want you, you have given me the whole roadmap how to solve this problem. All right, so count it as in, as a credit to you. Well done. Thank you so much, Kola. I will go ahead now and, and finish it off for you. All right, because yeah. I know it's a lot of um, nerve-wracking business to get it out on the line at all at once. So thank you so much for your call. So he gave us viewers out there, and I hope some of you all took his advice and tried to work it out um, at home. He says that we have the five scores from his first throws, from his first five throws, all right? And after his sixth throw, his mean is 25, right? So what was his sixth score, right? His first five scores, we already have those, all right? So if his mean at the end of the sixth throw was 25, okay? What was his total score at the end of six throws? Okay, what was his score, total score at the end of five throws? We find that difference and we are going to know how much his sixth score was, okay? So we added up the first five throws, which are these over here, and we got a total of 120. All right, and our brave caller was trying mightily to add it up um, at world record speeds over the phone, and we do commend him for that effort. All right, so that was that is our sum after five throws. Okay, this is the sum after five throws, and his average after six is 25. So what is the sum after six throws? Again, we are missing a sum. We have a count of six, and we have an average of 25. So we're going to do the opposite operation to find out how much the sum is. So we're going to multiply the 25 by six. All right. And we're going to get a sum of 150. So if after five throws, his sum is 120, and after six throws, the sum is 150, what would have had to have been his sixth score? We simply take the 150 and subtract the 120, and we'll get a score of 
30 points from his sixth throw. So that's how we got from the 120 after the five throws to the 150 after the six throws. So this was a quite a, a more involved type of problem, right? We need to thoroughly understand the concept of mean. All right, what is happening? That will make the mean become a certain number, right? What is that extra step that we need to take to go from our sum of 120 to our new sum of 150? And once we understand that, we are able to subtract and we are able to see what the missing, what the sixth score was, all right? So I hope everybody at home understands this one. Again, this is a section one type question. So it's a lot of working involved for that one mark. You have to work really hard for this one mark. And we are really happy that we are able to help you all out there and to help your kids and to bolster those who are already confident, to bolster their confident, confidence, to give them an avenue to call on live television, you know, and to show us what they're made of. So well done, caller. All right, it was a, quite a lot for you to do. The, the question wasn't even up on the board for 20 seconds when he, when he gave us that call. Such is his confidence, and I'm sure if he had a little more time to sit and think it through that, well, he already had the logic down, it would have just been a matter of him getting the final answer there. All right, so now we're moving on to something that was very topical a short while ago. All right, we had the CPL here, the CPL finals and semi-finals here in Trinidad. All right, so this is a question where we're going to apply our knowledge of averages to cricket. And if you do watch cricket, you'll notice that cricket loves statistics. All right, if you look at the screen in between the overs and so on, you're gonna see a whole host of numbers. All right, and this, this is the foundation. If you wanna become a sports analyst, in the future, a sports reporter, you want to understand how the game works, you know, who is the top player, who is the man to look at, or the, or the woman, in case of whichever sport it might be you're looking at. You need to understand something about numbers. All right. So Rajesh has a total of 180 runs after four innings. All right. How many runs must Rajesh score in a fifth innings to increase his average to 50 runs. So very similar to our last question, and we do have a caller on the line already. Good evening, caller, and welcome to See Results on IBN TV. Good evening. Hi, good evening, and who am I speaking with? Miriam. Okay, welcome, Miriam. Do you have an answer for us here for this question? Yes, my answer is 46. 46? All right, can you tell me how you got to that 46? I said 180 at 50, which is 250. And I said 250 divided by 5, which is 46. All right. 180, and you added how much did it? You added 50, did it? Yes. And you, and you divided the 230 by? 5. All right, OK. So I would like you to listen to me off air now, right? Because you made up one slight error, and I don't want to keep you on the phone for too long, right? So I'm going to explain the error to you now, but thank you so much, Miriam. We do appreciate all calls, all right? It's not about always getting it right. Sometimes you make a little mistake and it will be the reason why you never get it wrong again, okay? So Rajesh has a total of 180 runs after four innings. How many runs must Rajesh score in a fifth innings to increase his average to 50 runs, okay? So he scored 180 after four innings, all right? He scored 180 over four, all right? And that would give us his average after four innings. All right, so his average then would have been at 45. And mind you, we don't, we don't actually have to calculate the average after the fourth innings. I just want to make sure, because there's a lot of information here that everybody understands. So in the meantime, I'm seeing, I'm seeing that I have another caller. So before I give away the answer, I'll give this other caller a try. Good evening, caller. Welcome to IBN. Hello. Hi, good afternoon. Who, who am I speaking with? 
Um, TV. Okay, welcome to the show. Do you have an answer for us? What? Do you have an answer for this question? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Yes. Well, if if you have one AP and four innings, then fifth, then fifty multiplied by five. Mm hmm. 50 multiplied by 5 will give us what? 50 multiplied It would give us the number of runs after 5 innings, right? So after, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then, and then we minus and that's from 180. Yes. So, um, and that will give us? And how much would that give us? I didn't calculate it. <laughs> All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cola. So we got some food. I help, guys. All right? So after the fifth innings, we have a new sum. Our old sum was 180, right? But one, some, some number of runs divided by five that's giving us an average of 50 runs, all right? So what did he have to score for that to take place? All right, well, in the first instance, we need to know what the sum was after five innings. So the sum, again, we do the opposite operation, and we'd get 50 multiplied by five, as he rightly said, would give us 250 runs. So in order for him to jump from this situation here, to this new situation of an average of 50 runs, all right, he, need, he needs to carry his score up from 180 to 250. So how many runs would he have to score in order for that to be? We say 250 subtract our 180, all right? And that gives us 70 runs. So our answer is 70 runs. All right. And maybe this would have to have been a really off over. All right. Because to score 70 runs in one over, you'd have to score over 10 runs a ball. So, all right, this question, it might be a bit unrealistic, but it is realistic in the sense of it can't come for your SEA exam, all right? There probably have to be a whole bunch of no balls and free hits and so on for this to happen. But in order for him to increase his average to 50 runs per over, he would have to score 70 runs to make up that shortfall. So <clears throat> we are approaching the time for Maghrib Salah. And we are going to take a break now, and which will be followed by the Adhan for Maghrib. And I will rejoin you after the Maghrib Adhan to wrap up the math segment. And then afterwards, we'll have Miss Naila with our English language arts for today. Um, please stay tuned, and we'll be back afterwards.
Assalamu alaikum, good evening, and welcome back to C Results on IBN TV and also streaming on the C Results Facebook page. Um, today we've been covering the topic of um, mean. Okay, we have started our uh, statistics stream, which is the fourth stream in the mathematics syllabus, which is tested for SEA. We were doing some section one type questions, and we've had a lot of wonderful calls, people chiming in with bits and sometimes the whole answer, helping us along the way, giving us the logic, the steps that they would have taken to answer the question. And so far, they've been pretty spot on, a little arithmetic error here and there. But this is what we're here for, for sharpening up those math skills, OK? So, so far, all of the questions that we've looked at have covered the topic of the arithmetic mean, all right? And we have another sort of average which is used, which is called the mode, all right? So I'll probably just have a few minutes left before the end of the program, and I'll just like to let you know what the mode is and how it differs from the arithmetic mean. So the mode is another kind of average used in, in statistics, all right, which is a branch of mathematics. And the mode is a value or item which occurs most frequently. All right, it is the most common or popular value in a given set of data. That is the mode. So it's the most popular, it's the most common one. So this is actually a pretty easy question to answer in most cases once you've taken the time to really analyze which value or which item is the most frequent one or the one that is most popular. And here it's already put for us in a nice statistical chart, a table, a frequency table. And Hazra counted the cars passing her school and noted their colors, all right? Um, so the color red, blue, green, white, and black are the types of colors that she would have seen. And the frequency is the number of cars that are those colors which would have passed her by, all right? So she saw seven red cars, 10 blue cars, five green cars, 14 white cars, and 10 black cars. So which color is the mode? Bearing in mind that the mode is the most popular, the most common one, the one that's most frequent. I do already have a caller on the line. Good evening and welcome to see results on IBN TV. Hello, good evening. Good afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome to the program. Who am I speaking with? To Shara Dela. Welcome to Shara. And do you have an answer for us for this problem? Hello? Yeah. Okay, go ahead, please. White. White? White, yes. Yeah. Okay, well done. Excellent. How do you know it's white, by the way? Because. Yes. Because it's the most. Yes. Car seen in that color. All right, well done, excellent. Can't find that logic at all. All right, so thank you so much for that call. She would have seen 14 white cars as opposed to all the others, all right? Some, some were even seen 10 times, but it's not the most. The one that was the most or the most frequent is the white vehicle, so well done. Thank you so much for that call. Um, okay. And white was our answer for this problem. Okay, so well done. The answer being white. Okay, so I'm just going to actually take this opportunity again to ask those who haven't yet registered for the Edmodo um, account or web class where we post weekly quizzes and assignments to help sharpen your child's understandings, understanding of the topics we would have done for that week. It's completely free, parents. You go to www.edmodo.com and you enter the access code shown. It has changed from the last time, um, but those of you who already have accounts with us, that, that will not affect you. Your username and password will remain as it is. Those of you who are signing up for the first time, you're going to go to edmodo.com or through the Edmodo app, and when you're joining a class, you're going to use this class code. Alternatively, you can click on our link in the About section of our Facebook page, which will take you directly into the class, but you won't have to enter the code, but you will be pending approval, and don't worry, we do approvals every single day. So whether you choose to 
access our page via the access code or through the link on our Facebook page, you are going to be given access in a very timely manner. And we do have some assignments currently posted from last week's material. What if you are a new, a new, a new viewer of the show? Um, fear not, we have all of our episodes which were previously aired, they are on the Facebook page under the videos, so you can find it under the videos section, you can find it in the timeline and you can re-watch our videos, even for those who viewed it already, you can use it as a study tool as SCA approaches, and you can use the videos from last week in order to answer those quizzes which are posted and which are due at Sunday at one minute to midnight, alright, so we're giving you a lot of time to answer those questions. It was posted yesterday on Sunday. We already do have quite a few submissions from people who would have already submitted. Um, continue to do so. I'll be reminding you about it all throughout this week. All right. So thank you so much. We'll, we'll wrap up next week with the remaining mode questions, and then we'll move on to another topic. Sorry, that won't be next week. That'll be this Thursday, actually, when we continue with our maths. Remember, we have C results every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday live from 5 to 7 p.m. And we also have repeats at the same time on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Um, thank you so much for viewing. And stay right there because in a few minutes, we are going to have English language arts with Ms. Naila Shah. I have been your math teacher, Mr. Ijaz Ramsahai. Thank you so much for viewing, and do stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum, good evening, and thank you for joining me right here live on IBN and on our Facebook page that is with C Results. I am Naila, and I will be doing this episode of ELA with you. So, so far, we have gotten a little bit accustomed to what the paper or the format of the ELA component for SEA looks like. Right? So we started off with task one, which was spelling. We did quite a number of um, examples uh, where you called in, I gave your answer, and then we explained certain rules and went over incorrect answers. And then we also did punctuation and capitalization, 
that as well, very interesting and very well done by all the callers and viewers and um, all of you who assisted in any way. So that was beneficial in the sense that we learned how to use um, punctuation in the varying lines according to the examples given as well as capital letters. Now we are on task three, which is still section one of the ELA paper, which is grammar. So in the grammar section, you have to identify the error and you have to put the correct answer. Same as in task one, it is worth actually 12 marks. So for grammar, actually, it takes a lot, a lot of effort. You actually have to apply all rules that you have been learning from standard one uh, straight up till up until this point, there's a, there are a lot of rules for grammar and you need to know them. This isn't like spelling where you can just guess, you need to actually know it and apply it. So this is what we are doing. We are analyzing line by line very carefully. We are looking at the possible error, what the actual error is and what, what is your correction and the reason for that correction to help you better understand the mistake that you are making or even if you are on the right path, help you to better understand, to clarify, you know, to benefit all of us. So that is what we want to continue with today. So grammar actually is, um, like I said, very lengthy. So we have quite a couple episodes to continue with grammar. So it's not going to be like spelling or punctuation. We could just run through and probably later on, later down, um, coming up to SEA, we could probably do a recap. Grammar, we're going to take it step by step. We're going to take it really slowly. And we're going to really work through this together, OK? So here. Just I have um, the rules for you, parents, just in case you missed it, or new viewers, welcome, I must say. Uh, just in case you missed the rules for task, task three in section one, which is the grammar component, you have your rule there, which is there is one grammatical error in every line in the passage below. Underline each error and write the correct version in the box provided. This is what your task three looks like. So first you have to identify the error, you have to underline that error, and then in the box provided to the right there, you, will, you actually have to write the correction. So like we have been doing, the pieces up there, I hope, I know some of you have already started reading that. Take your time, do not rush. Remember we want to read it through one time very carefully. You know, um, here we are gonna probably spot the errors, but on our second reading is where we actually want to start underlining our possible errors, just in case you are not sure whether it's um, is, is or are or there, or whatever the error is, you know, you start to think critically, because this is what um, your essay is all about now, critical thinking. So you want to think critically there, and of course get the best answer, your correct answer, the only answer there. So let's read, let's read this carefully. Our country is one of the more beautiful countries in the Caribbean where many different races exist in peace. The diverse people all unite for celebrate various festivals and holidays annual. Tourists are amazed by the spectacular display of colors and creative during the carnival celebrations. So I'm just gonna give you a minute to read it carefully, read it over. We are not going to open up the lines, however, just yet. What we are going to do, I'm going to do this piece and I'm going to highlight all the errors and the correct answers. And while we are going through each error, you are going to be given a chance and opportunity to call and we'll have little um, tasks in between where you can call and apply the knowledge that you have learned from this task in those example pieces or sample pieces. So let's see, let's look at line one. I hope that you have your paper with you, your pencil with you and start, start writing, okay? Start scribbling away, put, put down what you think is your error there and put what you think is the correct answer. So let's look at line one. Our country is one of the more beautiful countries in. So if you, if you had chosen more beautiful, you are correct. Now, think about it. If you did not choose this answer, think about why. Why is this the error there? So our country is one of the more beautiful countries in. So actually, it should be most beautiful. So not more beautiful, but most beautiful. Now, we are going to do the entire passage and then we are going to go on to explain why it is most beautiful rather than 
more beautiful. It's the same style we are going with um, from last week, where we are going to do the piece and then examine it closely to help you better understand uh, whatever little errors you are making at this time. Let's continue there. The Caribbean, where many different races exist. Write on your piece of paper, what do you think is your error? If you chose exist, you are correct. And why is that? Okay, I'm just gonna go back there. Should actually be exist rather than exist with an S there. So by now you are thinking in your head, what is the difference between exist and exist with an S? So you should have a very clear idea or um, if not very and you are new to the program and this is a refresher or you are now learning this over, you should have an idea why it is exist rather than exist. So let's go ahead. We are now on line three. In peace, the diverse people all unite for celebrate. Look at it closely. See if anything there clicks to you. What stands out? What are you thinking? It's actually Four, the error there is four. Should actually be two, celebrate. Some of you are giving yourself a little clap. Mommy's giving you a pat on your back. Job well done if you have gotten all three answers correct so far. And you have, well, of course, you would have underlined the error or selected the error. So that is already three and three, two, that's six marks there for you. So you're already halfway done with this task. And you have already gotten six marks. So we want to get all 12 marks. Various festivals and holidays annual. Tourists are. What is your error in this line? Annual. Why is it annual and what should it be? Annually. Right? Great. Line five. Amazed by the spectacular display of colors and now, if you are not sure what your error is in this line, line five, read over from tourist R. That will help you. So nothing is wrong with going back and reading the line from before because your sentence may have started before. So that, that always helps. So tourists are amazed by the spectacular display of colors and that's a key there, that's a help, that's a way that can help you to easily identify your error. And if you chose amazed, once again, you are correct. And if you, had, if you did not choose a maze and put a maze, that's okay. Very shortly, we are going to understand why we put a maze rather than a maze. Line six, creative during the carnival celebrations. Once again, you can probably go back all the way back from tourist. You can probably go back all the way from tourist and read it over. Tourists are amazed, so now that you know the correct answer there, tourists are amazed by the spectacular display of colors and creative during the carnival celebrations. If you underline creative, you are correct. And if, okay, I'm sorry, I'm continuously touching the screen there. Right, and if you replace creative with creation, bravo, job well done. If you got all six answers, great job. If you got five out of six, we still have some work to do. Even if you got four or three, we have work to do and we still have some time. This is what we are trying to do. Uh, we're trying to help you as best as we can for the upcoming 2020 exams. You know, it's just a mere matter of weeks. It's very short, time is very limited and we want to utilize the time as best as we can. So this is why we have chosen to do this program. So parents at home, we make it easy for you, you know, so that you can also help your child. So, how, so since you are becoming familiar with um, the content required for SEA or the style and pieces of work that they need to do, you can probably, you know, source some of these and get your child started. I know there are a lot of booklets available and students are doing booklets in the classroom. Here is some extra work for you and in your spare time, find some other work to do, practice, 
And a good way to practice also is on our Edmodo app. So on our Edmodo app, um, there are quizzes placed there for you, testing whatever content was delivered during the week. So like today, I'm doing grammar. So the test this week will also be based on grammar. The test last week was also based on grammar because we started grammar last week. So this is a great way that um, you students can get involved and practice. And parents to see and monitor as well as assess how your students uh, have been performing after viewing the program. And just a note to remember, if you missed the, um, the episode live, you can go back on our C results page on Facebook and you can catch the videos there under videos and rewatch them. Also, replays of these um, videos live on IBN are every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., right? Great. So now what we are going to do here, we are going to now understand our corrections. So the first error there in our line one was more beautiful. Our country is one of the more beautiful countries in the, or in. And we said it was most beautiful rather than more beautiful. Now why did we say most beautiful rather than more beautiful? Now last week we came across a similar type um, sentence and the error was very similar where you had more and you had to choose most or you had um, an ER word and you had to put an EST word, right, with your comparatives and your superlative. So this is very similar here in the sense that we are going to use most beautiful rather than more beautiful and here's how you're going to do that. So just a refresher, just in case you missed um, the last episode, I'm just going to recap quickly so it can help you understand why we are choosing what we are choosing. So let's look at this. A comparative adjective, a comparative adjective is used to compare two nouns. We already know this. We already learned this. ER is added to the end of one syllable words to form the comparative adjective. Comparative adjective, so the comparative adjective is usually followed by the word than. So that is a hint there, how, we will, how we'll be able to figure out or detect the error or even to know which one to use, whether it's your comparative or your superlative. Now look, let's look at this example here. Sam looks happier than Sophie this morning. How did we know to use the comparative happier, the adjective there, comparative form, happier rather than happiest? So first of all, we needed to know that the comparative adjective is used to compare two nouns. We are comparing Sam and we are comparing Sophie. So we are comparing their looks. So Sam looks happier than Sophie. Because the comparison is taking place between two nouns, and we have it there for you, you will be able to, you should know that we should use happier rather than happiest. Another clue there is that we have than. Once you see than there and it's a comparison, you know it's the comparative form. Look at example two. The kitten is cuter than the puppy. What are the two nouns that we are comparing here? We have a kitten and we have the puppy. So we have our adjective here, cuter. How do we know to use cuter? We chose cuter because we, first of all, we are comparing two nouns, which, is, which are the kitten and you have the puppy there. And then there's also your hint than, which shows a comparison between two nouns. Good, now we have the superlative form and we need to know as well, just as a comparative, we need to know when to use a superlative. A superlative adjective is used to compare three or more nouns. Notice your difference immediately. Your superlative adjective is used to compare three or more nouns. In your comparative adjective, you only compare two nouns. So that's your difference right there. EST is added to the end of one syllable words to form the comparative adjective. Let's look at the example to better understand what that means. So we have winter is the coldest season. So uh, we don't have winter in Trinidad, of course, but here, winter, which refers to one, is the coldest season. But there are four seasons, like for example, in America, four seasons there. So they are not referring, they are not referring to one season, 
they actually comparing it to all the seasons. So if you're making a comparison between three or more nouns, you have to use the superlative form. Hence the reason we chose coldest rather than colder. Great. Let's look at example two. Bill is the happiest of all. Let's first of all select our nouns. We have Bill and we have of all. Now of all here, we are going to compare Bill of all, to, sorry, to all. When we say all, are we talking about one, two? If I say all of us, am I talking about two or three persons? I am talking about a lot of people. So Bill is being compared to a lot of people. We do not know the actual number, but all is understood to be many. So Bill is the happiest, hence the reason we chose happiest here, because your superlative adjective is used to compare three or more nouns. But we already did that last week, and I know that was just a refresher, but the reason I'm doing it over, we're gonna lead up to something else, using more and most, and I just wanted you uh, to just be mindful of what we already learned and to keep that in the back of your mind, right? And you're gonna see why shortly. So here are just some examples of the positive, comparative, and superlative forms. So even if you have great, greater, greatest, or you have thin, thinner, thinnest, just a point to note here, thin, thinner, thinnest, notice your spelling change. So you should be mindful of your spelling change if you are in your comparative or superlative form, that is if you have to change your positive to comparative or superlative. Or even clumsy, you would have clumsier and clumsiest. Your dirty as well, spelling change there. Now, look at the last two. We have famous, more famous, most famous. Now, what is the reason do you think, or what's the reason do you think we use more famous rather than famouser. Is famouser a word? No, it's not. So if we have to compare in our comparative adjective form, we would use more famous, just um, similarly where you are comparing between two nouns, and if you have to compare between three or more, you would use most famous. So you wouldn't say he's the most, he would, you wouldn't say he's the famousest, person. You would say he's the most famous person. Similarly, generous. So you have generous, more generous, and most generous. Even these words and these forms are a hint to you if you are trying to figure out what is the comparative form of the word generous, and you say generous-er, you know something is wrong. Or generous-est, something is wrong there, right? You would say most generous or more generous. So that's a hint there, when you actually say it, you will actually detect the error in your own, by, for your own self. Good. When you have an adjective or adverb that has three or more syllables, use more and most. So this here is precisely, precisely what we are talking about, what we came across in our passage at the very beginning, where we had most beautiful rather than more beautiful. And here you are going to learn why we have chosen most beautiful rather than more beautiful. Or well, even by now you are starting to pick up, put two and two together, and you know you are figure, figuring out the reason we have chosen most rather than more. And here's another reason why. So just as we said, more, sorry, ER and EST words are formed when there are one syllable words. Here you have when an adjective or adverb has three or more syllables, use more and most or less and least to form the comparative and superlative degrees. So you have the positive, which is uncommon. You have more uncommon, most uncommon. Now when I say three or more syllables, break up the word uncommon for me. How many syllables did you get? Clap it out, uncommon. So that's three syllables there. What about adorable? Adorable. So you have four syllables. So you use more or most with words that, are, that have three or more syllables. Just be mindful of that. That's just a little tip for you to help you uh, determine whether to use ER or more or EST or most. And similarly with less and least. You have attractive, less attractive, least attractive. Popular less popular, least popular, right? Just be mindful of those. 
And of course, like everything else that we have come across so far, there are always irregular forms of words, whether it's spelling or whatever it is, just as irregular adjectives and adverbs. Here now, we have the positive, comparative, and superlative. But there are irregular forms of these. So you would see, so if you're looking at bad, what is the comparative of bad? How many of you at home say badder? I am badder than you. Do not say that. What you should actually say, worse or worst. I know that's a slang, but this is actually your correction here for in terms of writing, because we usually write how we speak, and we want to avoid little errors like that. So we have bad, worst, and worst. And then we have ill, ill, which is similar to bad. We have ill, worst, and worst. Uh, when I say similar, I mean in a comparative and superlative form. You have many, more, and most. And this is a very common one, well, better, best. You have to know when to use these words and in which form or which form that they would take. So I know that was a lot for you to take in there, but I hope you did. And um, here, you're gonna get an opportunity to actually call us, so the lines are gonna be opened up now. Call us and help us fill out this positive, comparative, and superlative table. Now, just be mindful, guys, when you're calling, listen to us on the telephone rather than on the television set, okay? And that will help you to answer the questions a little bit easier and faster as well. So we have wealthy. Wealth here, yeah. what is my superlative form? I have bad, worse, what is my superlative form again? Then I have, in my positive, I have fabulous. My comparative is missing. And then in my superlative, I have most fabulous. I have expensive, less expensive, and my superlative is missing. I have good, something in my comparative, and I have best for my superlative. So call. Here is your chance, call and give us your answer. I want to know if you were really paying attention. Now, do not, do not think that you are not gonna use this in your writing. We actually use it a lot more frequently than we think. A lot of times uh, we are writing and we come across ER or EST words and we are not sure which one to use. Good evening, we have a call on the line. Welcome to IBN, you are live with C Results. Hello. Hi, good evening and welcome, what's your name? Alex, I'm from Lacano. Hi, Alex. So you're going to help us there with our first answer. We have wealthy, wealthier. What should my superlative form be? Wealthiest. Can you spell wealthiest to me? W-E-A-L-T-I-E-S-T. -E -E. Say that again for me. W-E-A-L-T-I-E-S-T. <laughs> okay, so I'm guessing there that was a guess, but you know what, job well done, okay? So that worked out for you, but if this is a new word to, for you, and this is your first time using it, or in a long time you did not actually use this word, add it to your vocabulary list, please, and practice the spelling of this word, wealthiest. Great, so you're very correct there. We have another call on the line, good evening, call and welcome. Hi, good evening. My name is Adriana Collins from Rochelle Augusta with the Aqual. Hi, nice to have you with us. Um, so I have bad, worse, and what will my superlative be? The, the superlative is worse. Spell it for me. W-O-R-S-T. Um, do you think you can give me a sentence with the word worst? Um, he was the worst at spelling. Very good. He was the worst at spelling. Excellent job, thank you so much for calling. So we well, use worst, worst at spelling because we are not referring to one child. She's, she may be referring to a class or entire school or whatever it is. So we use a superlative form. Job well done. Let's look at fabulous. We have fabulous, um, so our know, comparative form is missing and then we have most fabulous. Good evening, call and welcome to IBN. You are live with C Results. Is this the Hi. ITTV? Sorry? Is this the ITTV? It's IBN with C results. You are on the ELA program right now. Yes. Um, you are on the ELA program right now. Are yes, you going to give I, us? I am going to say the comparative for fabulous is sure. more fabulous. More fabulous. Any spelling change there? 
Any spelling change there? Sorry. Uh, for more fabulous, is there a spelling change no. or does no, okay? No. Very good. Thank you so much for calling and contributing to giving us that correct answer. Now let's move on. We have expensive, less expensive. We have another call on the line. Good evening, call and welcome to see results. Hi, um, yes, I would like to answer a question. Sure, would you like to give us your name as well? Uh, my name is Nicholas. Hi, Nicholas. So you're a very popular caller, right? Yeah. So let's, in a super, superlative form. Yeah. The uh, answer is least expensive. Least expensive. Any spelling change with the word expensive? Um, no, but there's a spelling change in, um, in least, which, which we're just not spelling there. Least, right? Yeah. Okay, very good. Thank okay, you so much um, for calling. So just um, rather than a spelling change in the comparative form, we'd use less, and in the superlative, we use the, word, use the word least. But thank you so much for calling, and great observation. Last one here on our table. For positive, we have good, something, and best. Now, what's, what is it? Is it good, gooder? What do you think? Call us, let us know. So I'm just gonna fill this one really quickly. So I'm gonna say good, better, and best. So now that you are familiar with um, your comparative and your superlative, whether it's ER or EST or more, or um, most or less or least, please practice them, that's the only way you are going to become perfect at this. You have to practice, okay? So I'm not going to take any calls yet until we have our next, next task available. But thank you so much for all the calls so far. Now, let's go back to this piece. So we are analyzing our passage. If you are now joining us, this is what we have been doing. We have chosen a passage here. This is actually task three, section one, ELA paper. And in this passage, we had to identify the error as well as put the correction for that error. And we are now on line two. And we said the error here was exist. And instead of exist, we chose exist, exist without the S there, right? And it's a little tongue twister. Now, why did we cho choose exist rather than exist? So this is something you have been doing quite a long time since so standard one, as early as possible. You have been learning about a singular subject will take a singular verb, and a plural subject will take a plural verb. In this case here, I want you to identify for me what is your plural subject, because we have a plural verb. So that's a hint. So what is your plural subject? So if you missed a couple episodes ago, what we did was actually collective nouns in subject-verb agreement. Here we have many different races, which is a class or various classes of people. So we have many different races. That is actually a collective noun. And here it's actually plural. So we hence the reason we chose a plural verb. A plural subject will use a plural verb in a present tense. Now, not only is this subject plural, you should note it's a collective noun. And a collective noun in the plural form will take a plural verb. Or a uh, collective noun in a singular form will take a singular verb. This is, oh, this is plural, and you should note many different races, plural. Hence the reason we chose exist without the S. We know it, plural. Uh, just in case, a reminder for some of you, the man drives to work, not the man drives to work. Your subject here, the man, plural. The children sing lustily, your subject, the children, which is also plural. Right? That's easy. Great. So lines are open once more. We have a couple sentences for you to call us and give us the correct answer. It is subject verb agreement, whether your subject is singular or your subject is plural. So sentence one says, the students try or tries hard in class. Read through the sentences, decide which one you want to call us for and which one you would like to give the answer for. But I'm just telling you on your piece of paper at home, you should have all answers written down, numbers one to five, and you should have all correct as well. Great, you have a caller on the line. Good evening, caller, and welcome to see results. Hi, uh, my name is Nicholas. Hi, Nicholas. Uh, 
the answer for number one is try because um, the the students right is pro, so therefore the answer is um, try. Excellent job, thank you, Nicholas. Okay. So. Paula, very correct there. So Nicholas has been tuning in since day one, and it is proven that he is listening and applying all everything that he has learned so far. Great, we have another call on the line. Good evening, call and welcome. Yes. Good evening, call and welcome to see results. Hello. Hi. Good evening. Hello. So can you just kindly just turn on your television set a bit so we can hear you a little more clearly? Call, are you there? A question. Okay, great. What's your name? Um, Makati Kalis. Great to have you with us this evening. So let's look at number two. One of my friends wants or wants to spend the night at my house. Call, are you there? Yes. Okay. So look at it carefully. Look at your subject. Is your subject singular? Or is it plural? Um, I forgot the question. Okay, we're we looking at number two. Once again, we're looking at number two. One of my friends want or wants to spend the night at my house. First of all, you need to find your subject there. What is the subject of your sentence? My friend. Are you sure? My friend. Are you yeah. sure? Yes. Look at it carefully again, one of my friends. So what will the verb be, want or wants? Wants. Spell it for me. W-A-S. W-A-S. Okay, it's actually want or wants. Not was, want, like you want something, or wants. W-A-N-T-S. S. Okay. Thank you so much, Kuala. Okay, so I'm just going to go through number two with you. So we have here one of my friends wants or wants to spend the night at my house. Just in case you were wondering here which part of a sentence to look at to, to know whether to choose want or wants, you are looking at one of my friends. More importantly, you are looking at one, one of my friends. This here, as the caller, um, probably would have gotten a little mixed up with, and I know a lot of you at home, you are looking at friends. You are not actually looking at friends. It is one of my friends. So one of my friends, once, so while the answer is correct, you must understand the reason for choosing the suitable verb. So just be careful and be mindful of your subject. Great, I have another call on line. Good evening, call on, welcome. Good evening. Hi, we are looking at number three. Good evening. Do you want to give us your name just Coaches before we answer number three? Appear to be Jenna Williams. S or no S? Sorry, Jenna, right? No S. Okay. The coaches. Jeremiah Williams. Yes, Jeremiah Williams. Right, the coaches. The coaches appear to be upset with the team. What is your subject there? Yes. What is your subject? The coaches. And is coaches singular or plural? Co co coaches are plural. Plural, excellent job. Thank you so much for calling. So your subject here is plural, hence the reason you need a plural verb. So you have another call on the line. Good evening, caller. Welcome to see results. Hi, caller. Good evening and welcome to see results. Hi. Hi, what's your name? Sarah, I'm calling from Canary Post. Great to have you with us this evening. We are looking at number four. Do you want to read that sentence and give us the correct verb? Okay. The herd? The herd of mm -hmm. elephants cross or crosses the river every spring. Great. What is your answer there? Cross. Cross? Yes. Why do you say cross? 
is more than one elephant they are talking about. Great. Did you by chance see our last episode with collective nouns? Yes, I did. Okay. So before you go, look at look at your collective noun here. You have the herd of elephants. How many herds? How many herds of elephants there are there? Call, are you there? Okay, I think we lost that call. But for those of you at home who also chose cross, look at this carefully. The herd of elephants cross or crosses the river every spring. The herd of elephants is one herd. It's a collective noun. So if this is also singular. While there are many elephants, there's only one herd. So your collective noun here is singular. Therefore, you should have a singular verb. So it is not actually cross, but crosses. So it's actually one, it's singular. The herd of elephants crosses the river every spring. Good evening, Kuala. Welcome to IBN. You are live to see results. Hi. 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 Welcome to see results. Are you the same caller from a minute ago? No. Okay, what's your name? Selena Ramkisun. Okay, nice to have you with us. So we are looking at number five. So you're going to read number five and you're going to choose the correct verb. Okay. So go ahead, the woman. Um, the woman buy new clothes. Buy or buys? Buy without the S. Why buy? What is your reason for choosing buy instead of buys? Because the woman is plural and Excellent so therefore job. you need to use a plural verb. Very good. That is exactly what I wanted to hear. Thank you so much for calling and giving us that answer. So call is very correct there in the sense that the woman is actually plural. So you need to have a plural verb. Just a reminder for number four here, please follow um, our last episode. You can find us on Facebook. Go over, rewatch that video with uh, collective nouns in terms of subject verb agreement and practice some of those. In the future, I will try to do some more sentences like these using collective nouns just so that we uh, have the best understanding of it. Okay, so we are now on to line three. So we have, in peace, the diverse people all unite for celebrate. So instead of four, we use two. Now what do we need to know about the words four and two? Why is it four rather than two? So this is where prepositions come in. You need to know that four and two are both prepositions. So it's all about choosing the correct preposition in your line or sentence. So the diverse people all unite for celebrate. So celebrate there, it's a verb. So can you for celebrate or can you, or will you to celebrate, to do something, right? It's a verb, you actually have to do it. So we have to celebrate rather than for celebrate. So you need to know and be aware of your prepositions. I'm just gonna hold that call for a minute just until we get to the activity. So prepositions. A preposition is a word that connects one thing with another, showing how they are related. Some prepositions, sorry about that. Some prepositions tell you about position or place. Know there are preposition or prepositional words and there are prepositional phrases. So we are just going to go through prepositions, just words for today, and later on we'll do some prepositional phrases. A preposition is usually followed by a noun or pronoun. So that's how you will be able to identify, not all the time, but this is an easy way that you can identify prepositions. And I know you are accustomed with prepositions. We use them in speaking, writing, a lot, all the time in fact. So here are some prepositions. Now let's look at this. We have into the box. What is your preposition there? Into. Where is the, where, where is that um, mouse going there? Into. We have out of the box. Out of, the direction that it is heading. Around the box. 
around, away from the box, away from. Here you are seeing the bird flying away. Again, direction. It shows relationship where the bird is in relationship to that box or toward the box. Coming in, toward, past the box. You know, you walked past your mummy. Onto the box. The frog jumps onto the box. Off the box. Frog jump off the box. Over. We have under, through, across, up, or down. There are many, many prepositions. These are just a few, right? Um, so you need to get acquainted with them. Probably get yourself a list. I know you may have a list, in fact, in your books, in your textbooks. Revise them and know when to use which one to avoid any mistakes as such in the passage. So rather than saying four celebrates, you know it's two celebrates. Great, so now the lines are open once more. Here we have five simple sentences. You are going to read the sentence to me and you are going to identify the preposition. Very easy, but um, don't think that it's too easy because a lot of times we can easily mix this up and we can get it wrong, right? So first sentence there. The horse jumped over the hurdle. Easy way to identify this. Remember, pre preposition shows you Preposition is a word that connects one thing with another, showing how they are related. Some prepositions, key here, some prepositions tell about your position or place. So, look at sentence number one. The horse jumped over the hurdle. What is your preposition in that, in that sentence? Number two, Joe arrived after me. When? The books fell off the chair. Where? The bone is between the two dogs. Where is that bone, right? Position, place, um, Sally is inside the store. So that's very easy there. So the lines are open, call us. Identify your preposition in each sentence. Good evening and welcome to IBN, your live with C results. Good evening and welcome to IBN. Hi, just a reminder to turn your television set down a little bit. Thank you, what's your name? I would like to answer the question for number two. Okay, how about we do number the one answer. first? Is that okay? The answer. We didn't do number yes. one as yet, so we can probably do number one first. Is that all right? The answer is over. Over. Very good. Since you wanted to do number two, I'm going to give you a chance to do number two at one time. What is your answer for number two? <laughs> the answer for number two is the. Is? Can you repeat that, please? After. After. Thank you so much for calling. So, two correct answers there. Great. We have another call on the line. Good evening, caller. Welcome to see results. We have another call on the line. Good evening, caller. Welcome to see results. Hello. Hi. Good evening. Hello. Hi. Good evening. Welcome. Hello. Hi. Just a little reminder to turn on your television. Set the volume a little bit. Good evening, caller. What's your name? My name is Tashara Dila. Hi, nice to have you with us. We are on number three now. So can you okay. read that sentence for me and identify the preposition in the sentence? You can go ahead. Okay. Uh -huh. The book fell off the chair. Good. What is your preposition there? The preposition is off. Off. Please note, and this goes, thank you so much for calling. So please note everyone, the spelling of off here is not O-F, rather it's O-F-F. -F. And in an upcoming episode, we are going to do the difference between O-F and O-F-F, -F, another common mistake, right? So please stay tuned for that. We have another call on the line. Good evening, caller, and welcome. Yeah, you Hi, caller, good evening, and welcome to Series Hello. Else. Hi, good evening. My name is Roshan. Hi, Roshan. So we are on number four. So can you identify the preposition in number four? The answer for number four is between. Between. Excellent job. Thank you so much for calling. Between. And we have a call on the line again. Caller, good evening and welcome. Hi. Hi, what's your name? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Hi, Hi, nice to have you with us. So we are looking at number five. What is your preposition in number five? Inside. Inside. Excellent job. Thank you so much for calling. 
So callers, you would note and viewers out there that um, these five sentences are very simple. Um, as we go on, we are going to do some more sentences, get some more practice in. But you just must remember, you must know your prepositions and when to use them. Similarly with conjunctions and all that we have learned thus far. Right? Everything that we are doing is to get you ready for SEA exam. So we're not going to take any more calls as yet until an another activity comes up. Right? But thank you so much though for all the calls. So we are now on line four. Various festivals and holidays annual tourists are. So if you want, you can go back, like I said, and read from the line before. So that will help you to, uh, to quickly pick out your answer. And if not, you can just read it as it is, and some of you might be able to determine it right away. Now, instead of annual, we chose annually. Now, annual here is an adjective. Annual means once every year, so it's describing a, a time, a period of time. But should it be an adjective? No, it should not. It should actually be an adverb, as with annually. Another way we know this is an adverb, simply, it ends with L-Y. That's very easy, right? But why we chose annually rather than annual? Because look at the sentence here. We have various, not sentence, but line, various festivals and holidays annually. It's given us a manner how something is happening. So we don't need an adjective here. We need an adverb, adverb of time. Now we did come across a lot of those where we had to change nouns to adjectives. So we could probably just, um, when we have that, great. So we came across a lot of those where we have nouns to verbs or verbs to adjective or adjectives to adverbs. This here, um, you need to know the basics of this. So you need to know your root word and you need to know words that can be derived from your root word, such with annual and annually. Here are a lot of examples for you where we have a noun and we can get a verb from that noun as well as an adjective and an adverb. So look at, look at beaut, beauty, sorry. So we have beauty. Beautify would be your verb. And from beautify, you can get beautiful. From beautiful, you can even get beautifully. So notice how we are taking root words and we are forming new words. So whether it's a verb, an adjective, or an adverb from that base word. Look at protection. Protection is a noun. We have, we have here protection. Protect is our verb, protective. And we have protectively. Notice again how we are using this word protection to form your verb, adjective, or adverb. This is important as in writing, you might want to use protect, but later down, you have to use another form of that word protect, and you may need to use protection. It comes from the same word, but it gives you a different meaning. Look at um, success. You have success, succeed, successful, successfully. Please take note of this. If it's the first time you are seeing a table like this, it's very easy to find on Google. If not, you know the videos are available right on Facebook on our C results page. Go back, rewatch that video, probably do a snapshot um, of the time that this video is being shown and learn them. You don't have to learn them off any, for any specific reason, but you need to know how these words can be derived from our base word. Right, how we can use one word to get another word and keep developing our vocabulary. So a lot of times in our grammar, grammar task, we are going to come across um, uh, errors like this. So you will have um, a word like Java who just had annual, but in fact it should be annually. So you need to know how to use that base word and form form words from it, whether it's adjective, adverb, or your verb. So you need to keep that in the back of your mind. That is always going to come. Uh, five out of the six times, there is an error like that, OK? But don't quote me on that. I'm just showing you, saying something from observation. I always come across errors like this. So we are now on line five. We have, so we're going to read from here. Tourists are amazed by the spectacular display of colors. We said here our error was amazed. So amazed here is actually, what do you think it is? Is it a verb? Yes, it is, right? Amazed. And here, it should actually be amazed. Now, why amazed and not amazed? So we have by the spectacular display. So here, this sentence goes on to show you what 
what the tourists are being amazed by. Here is very important, this part of it, by the spectacular display. So they, are they amazed by the spectacular display or are they amazed by the spectacular display? So you need to know here, from a verb, we have an adjective. Ad amazed there it describes how they are feeling. Same things, we are, same thing that we just went, uh, went through in your table, where you are taking a base word and you either have to form a verb, an adjective, or an adverb with it. Just be mindful of that. Like I said, again, back to back, we came across similar type errors. Just notice also, ed is added there to make the word amaze rather than amaze. And let's look at the last error here. We have creative during the carnival celebrations. So, you can, again, you can go back and read from tourists, or you can just identify the error here. So we said the error was creative rather than creation. Create, creative here will be what? What part of speech do you think it's gonna be? So if you said it's actually an adjective, and from that we got a noun, you are correct in that sense. Again, you have to take that word and use it in another form just as we just did with annually or amazed. So it'll actually be, or actually will read as display of colors and creation during the carnival celebrations. If you got all six correct, like I said, congratulations for you, that's 12 marks in the bank. Now, here I have a similar type table what we just went through, just like we went through just now with your noun, verb, adjective, adverb, here you are going to form for me or put in the missing form of the word. So we have a couple spots missing. Call us, give us that answer to help us fill out this table as quickly as we can. We just have a short time remaining, so hopefully we will get this done before time ends on us, okay? So we have the noun hatred. What is the verb of the word hatred? We have hateful and hatefully. While you are uh, choosing your answer, and if you, already had, if you already chose your answer, think about sentences using each one of these words. So think of a sentence with hatred, the verb of hatred, hateful and hatefully. See how you can use all those words in a sentence. Probably not at once, but how you can use them. Great, you have a call on the line. Good evening, call and welcome. Good evening, Kuala. Welcome to see results. Good evening, Kuala. Welcome. Good evening, Kuala. Good evening. Hi, good evening. What's your name? Um, Aditya Yulva. Great to have you with us this evening. Are you going to give us the verb of, uh, from the word hatred? Yes. Um, the answer is hate. Excellent job. Hate. Thank you so much for calling and giving us that answer. So those of you who had hate at home, you are correct. You know hate is a verb, it's a doing or an action word. You can actually hate something. Let's move on to the second word there. We have glory, glorify, adjective there, and gloriously. It's very easy, look at it closely. In case you do not know what is your adjective, I'm giving you a hint. Look at your adverb there. It comes from, your adverb will come from that adjective. So I'm just going to give that great. You have a call on the line. Good evening, call and welcome to see results. Hi. Hi, what's your name? Uh, my name is Nicholas. The Hi, what's your name? My name is Nicholas and the answer is glo glorious. Excellent job, Nicholas. Glorious. Thank you so much, Nicholas. Okay. You have been a real sport today. Great, you have another call on the line. Good evening, call and welcome to see results. Okay, we lost that one there. But now we have attract, attractive, attractively. What will your noun be here? Good evening, Kuala. Welcome to see results. Hi, what's your name? Hi. Hi, what's your name? Um, Selena, I'm Kisun. Hi, nice to have you with us. Can you give me the noun for attract? Um, it's attraction. Excellent job. Attraction. Thank you so much for calling. Attraction yeah. there. Great. Let's move on to this one. We have consideration, consider, considerable. 
Uh, just because, okay, I'm gonna take this call. Good evening, call and welcome to Series House. Okay, I'm gonna take this call. Good uh, call, are you there? Okay, so just because we are running out of time, I'm going to do this one for you. So you have considerable, considerably. Okay, so just notice your spelling change there. Instead of E, you have Y, considerably. So oh, notice so far, all of these adverbs and then L-Y. Easy, right? Good, and then we have action, something, active, and actively. Your verb here, you will get act. And can you act? Yes, you can. It is an action word. Okay, so that's about time there, folks. So before I go, of course, next day we are going to be continuing with our ELA lesson, just to wrap that up. But before we go, just a note, if you are now joining our Edmodo class, please note there is a change in, the spe in your code that is only for new participants if you are now joining. If you have already joined and you are already participating, you do not have to change anything. You are fine, your account is fine, your code is fine. This is just for new persons entering the program. This is your new code here. Please note the difference and follow our very simple instructions for students and for parents how to get started and how to use this app to help your child um, you know, assess themselves for having all the work that we have done so far. I just want to say thank you for all the viewers and all the support and all the brave students that we have calling in every day. That is Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. We thank you so much, and we do hope that you are benefiting from this program greatly. That is our pure intention here. So we are trying to help you as best as we can. Please be reminded that we are on every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. That's uh, from 5 to 7. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your neighbors. Spread the word, okay? And thank you so much for joining us. It has been my pleasure. I have been your ELA teacher, and I will see you tomorrow, God's willing. Win, win, win free groceries for a whole year this Christmas at Extra Foods. Plus, win plenty 55-inch smart TVs or plenty Christmas hampers in our Ring the Bell Christmas competition. Check in store and social media for details. It's a season of giving this Christmas at Extra Foods, where you always get extra for less. Contest approved by the NLCB. IBN can be viewed on the go now with the Airlink TV app for Google devices. Simply go to the Google Play Store, search for the Airlink TV app. Download the app, click on the link and fill out the form. The account activation will be emailed or texted to the user. It's safe as no credit card is needed. The first 30 days are free and you can subscribe and receive a box for your TV to stream the same content. Save big this Christmas with Food Basket Family Deals. No